Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to the final Tuesday race in Magnum Stars American Classic Series. No, this is not the final Tuesday race ever, but this is the final race of this season. So the track that we are doing here today is Blue Moon Bay Speedway Infield A Reverse. So as this goes, it is the last race of this particular series. I qualify fourth and immediately get overtaken. But on this first lap, we've got a couple of people that are having issues. Their tires aren't quite warmed up. They're having issues staying on the track. I'm able to make up a couple of positions. And then, of course, everybody's tuned their car in such a way that they've got such great acceleration. And I'm still struggling here. I wanted to make the point that this is the first race that I am genuinely in this Tuesday Classic Series where I'm genuinely using the clutch and the shifter. Finally, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and I'm still quite a bit of a novice at it. It wasn't until after this race where I started to really talk with Magnum a little bit about getting the technical side of, of figuring out when to, you know, push the clutch and when to do the brakes. Long story short, I was thinking that you still had to blip the throttle, but most people aren't doing this fancy heel and toe method quite yet. A lot of people are just, when you're braking, you're holding the brake, and then you're flipping the clutch as you're doing the shifter. Again, even still, there's a lot of technical work on that side that I still need to work on, and I'm very excited to say that with the next series that Magnum is going to put on, which will be the European Classics, which will be 1970s and 1980s European cars. I'm going to be doing that entire series with the clutch, with the shifter, without traction control, without ABS. And that is something that I did want to massively discuss here today, is that when it comes to this series, I have on my channel the very first time I interacted with downshift racing. And it was Magnum Stars, you know, two state American classic series. And it was with this very car, the Ford Mustang 429. And I had a massively different experience. Whereas I barely put on the throttle, I would spin out, I'd have all sorts of issues. And to see where I came from was just awesome in my mind. Because over the course of this past three months, I want to say it's been thereabouts. I've learned how to tune cars loosely. I've learned how to do a manual shifter, kind of. I've absolutely learned how to drive a car without traction control or ABS. I was actually just telling the group earlier on this Sunday race that I've started noticing that I've just turned off traction control completely now. I've normally set it on two and then just ran it as is. But now I've just started running without traction control completely and I've noticed how many cars are just fine without it. So it's it's been a really long time coming to finally make that jump. And so far so good. It's the interesting thing without running traction control is that in most situations, if stuff starts to get a little bit hairy, like your rear tires are starting to really lose tread and start to really degrade badly, you can just flip up traction control one or two points. That's why it's, it's dynamic. It isn't something that is completely set in stone where it's, oh, you're just a bad driver if you use traction control. It's like, no, it's, it's even the best drivers will use it to some extent. But again, coming back to this Tuesday race, learning how to drive without it on at all has been an absolutely wonderful experience. To be fair, I never thought I would be able to get to this point this soon. Less than three months and I'm already feeling comfortable, but the thing about it is it's not just driving without traction control, it's knowing how to tune your car to be able to account for that. I've learned that Whenever I've got a car that's really rear-end happy, I go straight to the tune, I go straight to the rear natural frequency, and I dive that thing all the way down to the left. <laughs> and nine out of ten times, it works fantastic. It's just, for whatever reason, the stiffness of the rear end really collects some of those bumps and just takes the car and just throws it. So, so when you take that and you soften it up, it just seems to take in those bumps or that traction change a lot better 
where it seems to absorb it and not throw the car as violently as it normally would, and is especially helpful with heavy rear drive American muscle cars, or rear wheel drive cars, should I say specifically. So many of you can probably put two and two together here. The fact that I'm not talking much about the race is because my race was trying to figure out how to do the shifter and the, the clutch. And for whichever reason, I don't know if I just didn't tune my car correctly or if I didn't do enough practice. I think it was because I didn't really do a whole lot of practice. I just was not close to the pack at all. And in the first couple opening laps, I tried my best to stay with the group. And fortunately, they had a lot of issues where they would spin out or have, you know, just these weird moments. But then it was very shortly thereafter where they would just pass me like it was no big deal. And, then, you know, not very long after that, I'm just kind of driving on my own. And thankfully, by the very end of it, I didn't get laps. But man, was it close. So not a great race to ever remember. But I think this race, as we we're talking in the chat, it was... A lot of remembrance a lot of we were just having a great time it's we didn't have a whole lot of people show up for this race but we were just genuinely enjoying ourselves and i think that's ultimately why i joined this group to begin with is to have a tight-knit close group of friends just hanging out having a great time and at the very end of it, I know some people were trying to fight for points, and I know Shio and Flanders had this thing where they, you know, tied for third or something crazy like that. And it's just all of this chaos and all of this just fun that you have with a group of friends. It's just fantastic. So again, thank you to Shio and to Justin for both allowing me to come into this group. And I've been enjoying it since. I really have. It's been great and i'm glad that we can and kind of go full circle here where we're talking about this last tuesday race as it was the mark it is the ending of the first series that is that i've ever been a part of part of this group so i'm a little bit nostalgic about it and i always 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 look back on this to show that mark of improvement from that red 429 not customized not anything to where I am now in this particular moment. So again, not a great race, but man, was it fun and it was just an enjoyable time. All right, so for this Thursday race, we are on Autopolis with our Group B cars. This one was very different because in the very beginning, I was running as the Nissan GTR, and I've been really enjoying playing as the GTR, driving it around, getting very used to it. But there was just something about it on this course where it was just really under series. So we changed to the WRX. I was able to lay down some great times, get a really good tune going. And then when we come into the race, it is just entirely chaos. I am still trying to figure this out. This is the biggest issue that I'm having is trying to figure out how to get traction from cold tires. Immediately, I'm struggling as I just the tires aren't warmed up. Everybody else is having issues as well, getting their tires warmed up. There is no traction on the ground, and I go from first to seventh in a sector and a half, and I am absolutely livid at this point. It wasn't at anybody in particular, but it was just from the standpoint that I had pace. I had a really great opening kind of lap, well, opening practice. And here I am in the race, just not able to get it to transfer over. And it's, it's the car just doesn't operate like I just had it set up to be. And mainly it's because that it kept on running wide and the tires were cold. So then these cold tires would be wrapped up in dirt. And as soon as I'd get like the dirt kicked off, I'd finally you know, start going around the corner, but the tires still weren't up to temperature. It's still the first couple laps, so the traction just wasn't there. And at this point, at the end of Sector 3, I am starting to just get a little bit of pace back, where I'm starting to catch up with the group. I've got Paven in my sights, and I know that with this straightaway, I can get into the slipstream, really just hold off Shio, and go for that podium place that I feel like I, I can get. I 
I honestly felt like I could win, but at this point, I get to the breaking point, tires are still cold, and then I go wide. Shio behind me drifts off into the gravel trap as well, and oh my goodness, I am beyond furious. Just this car, no tire temperature, no grip, no nothing. I've got Ringmaster starting to come up here. He gives me a little bit of tap, and again, I am just not in the right mindset. I am fighting so hard to keep this car on the track, to just keep this car going in the right direction. And before in practice and qualifying, it was just a dream to drive. I did not have any issues with any understeer. It was, I was able to collect the oversteer if it ever happened. And the car just drove great. As soon as this session started up, it felt like a completely different car as Ringmaster tries to drift around the outside. I managed to keep it all collected up on the inside and managed to pass him once again. And the pack ahead of me is starting to slowly fade away in front of me as I am still struggling to keep this car under control. I've got Ringmaster and Shio both drifting like Tokyo Drift behind me trying to keep their cars on course, just going from corner to corner to corner, drifting around, drifting around, and I start to see Omar come up a little bit closer. I'm seeing that orange Toyota 86 start slowly get larger and larger in my field of view, and I'm now focusing more on that. Knowing that I've got that goal ahead of me, and at this point, I am starting to feel like everything is starting to cool down a little bit. I'm becoming a little bit more calm, a little bit more collected, and trying to not be as flustered as I was in the first couple of laps there. The traction is still trying its best to come back, and it's it, we're getting there. It's not quite there, but I am now starting to set some very good times in that first sector. Again, Omar and Magnum are both slowly coming closer into the field of view. I'm holding off Shio the best as I can as we're going around one of the trickier chicanes of Atopolis. And at this point, I'm sitting there thinking, what else can I really do to heat up those tires to get them any better into that window of operation? You know, trying my best to stay out of the grass, and up ahead, Omar has a massive snap oversteer as he goes off, gets collected by the rumble strip and goes wide, and here, I see Shio is trying to make a dive on the inside. I cover him off, and I actually cover him off too much. I'm looking more at the radar than I am on the track, and I exceed track limits, and it was looking back on it, it is completely, absolutely deserved. I am only looking at blocking Shio off from making a very late, very weird inside dive move as he loses traction, and I managed to cover it off. But again, I get that half second penalty. With Autopolis, the nice thing about it that actually Magnum and myself were discussing in practice is where the penalty line zone is. With Fuji, with a lot of other courses, they put the penalty right about here on the main straight. So not only do you lose out on that top end speed, you start climbing up and then you immediately get shoved down, got to go down a couple of gears. So then when you get to the very end of the main straight, you're going 50 miles an hour less, you have less acceleration, to, and it's just, it, everything about it is horrible. But with the top list, it is only at the beginning of sector three, as we're actually seeing here, Magnum has a massive oversteer there and gets a half second penalty. And it's at the beginning of sector three where the penalty line zone is, and it's on a very short, straight away so we're able to really not lose a whole lot of ground omar has got some issues where he's going wide 
Magnum has seen the mistakes that Omar is making and dives up on the inside. What a very clean move by Magnum, but he himself goes wide. I'm starting to look up on the inside. I was going to go for three wide. Omar moves over off to the right, and I go up on the inside. I know that this is going to be in vain because I've got to serve my half-second penalty. Just a tiny bit of contact with the rear right against Omar. I push myself all the way over, as far over to the right as I can to allow space. Omar is diving up on the outside. We have a little bit of contact, but I managed to keep myself out of him to allow more space so we don't run him wide. He manages to come up on the inside and I am just within millimeters of that bumper there. And now I am starting to see, starting to analyze how his Sector 3 is. This spot is always super tricky, super technical. So it's always great to see how other drivers handle it. He's got a a little bit of a snap of oversteer there, a little bit of a drift that he has going through, but he covers off well. He's defensive driving very well, putting the car right on the line. I've got a little bit more grip on the inside, but I gotta just wait behind him. I can't go around him there. I'm hoping that I've got a little bit more top speed going down the main straight as I am only a second off my fastest lap there. I'm looking up on the inside there, seeing if I can make something happen. He goes a little bit wide, has a little bit of drift, keep, but keeps it on the track on the rumble strip. I'm noticing that I am still not within the fastest lap pace. Bulldog has pulled down to 154 and I've pulled down to 156 so I'm now understanding that trying to catch up with the front of the grid is not happening so I'm knowing that this fourth position battle might be it. If I can make this happen, this is potentially where I'm going to end up because already Flanders and Paven are just way out into the distance as I'm looking up on the inside of Omar there and just trying my best to see where I can maybe push him into a mistake. Not actually physically push him, but just freak him out. Get him to get him to make something where he's looking in the mirrors a little bit too much and look and misses the breaking point and just makes a mistake and I am trying my best to keep in his mirrors and at this point I actually did not realize how evenly matched the Toyota 86 and the Subaru WRX are. It's they are completely two different philosophies where again the 86 much like uh, Shio's Peugeot is very rear end happy it has a lot a lot of wheel spin as they go out wide here and the WRX is very planted has very little understeer very little oversteer and it's almost mid-engine I mean it's not but it's just how the weight distribution is it's just very even as we're again trying to look up on the inside of Omar there he covers off the apex very well and here we are a lap later still in the exact same spot he now moves well over to the left and I keep up on the inside again can I break late we break at the same time and I decide not to go into that inside move again we are still within tenths of each other and I feel that Magnum and Shio are just behind me they too are waiting for one of the two of us to make a mistake so they themselves can make up some places behind me Magnum's got a little bit of an issue of oversteer, but Shio is able to make up on that mistake. Not quite yet make a pass, but the th four of us now are getting really close, really comfortable in this chicane here as all of us are waiting for one another to make a mistake. Again, I am still with this, how, how planted this car is, I'm still trying to look up on the inside at all to see if there's anything that I can do Again, up on the inside, Omar goes just a little bit wide, but he comes back in, and then he goes wide. He has a little bit of a touch of the grass. His right tires are now coated in that dirt, and I know that I've got some opportunities that I can use here to just really start pushing him even further, making him flustered even further, make him look up on where I'm coming up, and then maybe get himself forced wide into some more dirt. Again, Magnum is just within inches of me here as he goes a little bit wide and Shio is able to cover off and make that opportunity work. Omar goes wide, has a snap of oversteer in that grass and that is the mistake that I was looking for. The moment that I've been waiting for three, four laps now 
where I go around on the outside, and I then, as we cross the line over into lap seven, I have secured my position in fourth place. But the fight is not over. It is actually just starting because now that I've made that position, that gain up into fourth, I now have to figure out how to fight off not one, not two, but three people who can see, can smell the blood in the water, who are as vicious and as ruthless at trying to make that happen. And as that goes, Magnum's got an issue on the first corner. He goes wide and loses some significant time as now Shio is trying to look on the outside of Omar. I am just praying and praying and praying that the two of them get into more squanders, into more fights, as I am trying my best to keep this car on the racing line already between their fights of what they've been doing back and forth. I've made a little bit of a gain, a little bit of a gap, and I'm hoping that I can change to turn this second or two gap into something more as I break late and go a little bit wide. I'm able to come back on the power. I have a little bit of a drift, but again, I am still maintaining my position, thankfully, and this is where this race ends up for me. How well can I defend my position? I think Shio has an incident a little bit ago where then Omar is able to make some gaps of his own and now he is focusing on me. Again, I'm trying my absolute best to take the WRX, keep it on the line, focus on the lap times more than on my mirrors in hopes that I can keep this up until the end of the race. And rather anticlimactically here, that kind of was the fight for the end of the race, because at this point, between Omar and Shio, they both have a little bit of back and forth, back in lap eight where Omar goes wide and is got some issues in sector three. Shio is able to make up the place, but not too long after that, Omar is able to make the place up. And at this point, I've done my best to try to keep as consistent lap times as I possibly if, as possibly as I can, as I am within 157, 156 very consistently. Again, fastest lap is Paven with a 153.9, so there is absolutely no way that I'm catching up to the front three positions here. They have been all decided at this point. I am like 20 seconds down or something at this point. It is just absolutely not going to happen. But my race isn't over, because even though I am well off the pace, I still have Omar and Shio behind me. There's still time that if I make some really stupid mistake and go off wide and get collected into the wall, that I can lose not one but two positions as Shio behind has got some massive issues on the chicane. His fight for fifth is over, unfortunately as he turns a couple of seconds into a massive 10 seconds behind, as now I am still concerned that if I do something dumb, that Omar is still waiting in the wings, seeing where he can make up time, and just hopes that in this last corner, that something happens where I go wide, where I spin out, where something happens with this WRX. And as we go around the final apex, no track limits, but here comes Ring! Absolutely out of the blue, Ring has decided that even though his race was over, he was going to start uh, <laughs> very conveniently screwing with other people. And thankfully, I catch it at the last minute because that could have been bad. I could have lost two positions. And yeah, something that we don't normally see in this, in this series. But, uh, fair enough. So for this final race, we are doing Alsace Test Course Reverse. But get this. A maximum of 300 power points, no tire restrictions whatsoever, and a maximum of 2,000 pounds. And there's a lot of context that's going to be needed for this one. Again, much like Magnum's series, the general downshift racing Sunday series 
its season also ends this week. So this is the last race before a season is reset and we start over with no points and we start fighting it out in our own little championship. With this, because it was the last race, I wanted to test out a car and really get my best tune that I possibly can with my own car and figure it out how to make it work. Most cases what will happen is throughout the week people are dropping in hints as to what cars they're driving, what times they're getting, and later in the week I start figuring out as they're posting their tunes, I start going, okay, I kind of like this car, I kind of like this tune, I'll go off of that and call it. And that was going to be kind of the same plan, but this week everybody was quiet. Nobody talked about their times or their tunes or anything. I started poking at a couple of people saying, hey, you know, what are we doing? And nobody's really responding. So I decide to take the Toyota Sports 800, tune it up to the best of my ability that I can, running comfort hearts, and the times in the time trial that I'm getting are like 107, 108. I get into the lobby, it's 108, 109, and people are starting to spill the beans. 105, 106, 1055. And I'm going, oh my God, I am not competitive. My time is just not anywhere close. I've been practicing Ron this whole week. What am I going to do? So I join early enough where I've got to some time to play, play around with the tune and play around with my cars and whatnot. And Magnum spills all the beans and says, hey, I was in a test lobby and some guy pulls up in a 959 Fiat Abarth and blows my doors off with like a 59 second lap or something crazy like that. So he reverse engineers the car, was able to get a really good tune, not quite to that time, but he is sharing it with people and say, hey, you guys should check this out. And nobody bats an eye. I don't know if everybody's just not interested or if everybody else has decided on their own tune so he makes mention about this and I go sure I, I'd like to look at this and during qualifying I swap out my car put it on a new livery throw on the 95 the 595 and suddenly I'm running like a 104 on lap 2 and I'm going oh God, what have you created? And Magnum goes, you know, it's a fast car and whatnot. It's pretty unstable, so I'm going to choose something else. So he grabs a different car, or I think his lap times were like 107 or something like that. So I'm running somebody else's tune, which is insanely rear-end happy with zero traction control. Now with NOS... It's got a short wheelbase, so if you have any drift whatsoever, it's like it just, you can't really correct it all that well. And somehow I'm running these crazy times during qualifying, and I'm going, oh god. And it's also an interesting week, too, because it's the week before the 4th of July, so we've got a couple of people who have decided to take a week off and go on vacation and whatnot, and that's fine. So... I've got this moment where I'm capturing lightning in a bottle. Just the perfect everything has happened. The right people are missing. I've got this ungodly tune. And suddenly I think I can make this work. So I start out and I qualify first. I start at the front of the grid and I just go for it. And it's really interesting, as you guys can probably tell at this point, that I pull away and I get three seconds within half a lap, but then Shio, normally what happens is when you go up the hill, you lose all sorts of speed and then you have some massive oversteer up the top of the hill. Shio negates all that speed loss and goes straight up the hill like it's no big deal. So the three seconds that he's down is gone in an instant. And suddenly I'm sweating bullets going, 
Oh, he might have been sandbagging during quali. This is not good. So as these first couple laps goes, these laps are short. They're like, again, 104, 105. Shio is putting his car right up on the inside whenever we go up the hill, and I am... He doesn't ever make the pass work because apparently when it goes downhill, he starts losing some time, which I'm still trying to figure that one out. But here we go. I just trying my best to just use the car as fast as I can and just keep it under control. That rear end is super slippy. So Magnum's advice that he gave to anybody who was going to run the tune is drive it with your big toe, like really feather the throttle really. So if you're looking at my throttle input with the foot cam, it is just really light. I'm never really just throwing it all the way down, but I am just really kind of trying my best to feel out where the grip is and trying to figure out where the traction is because the nice thing with direct drive and all the rest of this is I can just barely feel where I am starting to lose traction. So at this point, I'm just trying my best I'm silent, my heart is pounding, and it's barely lap seven. And part of this too, I remembered, I remembered, it's the last race of the season. I remembered that we can take nitrous. <laughs> so as this is going, I was worried that because I hadn't tried this tune much, that I'd have to worry about, you know, the tires being shredded. I'd have to worry about the fuel load not being good where I'd have to pit halfway through and there was a lot of question marks here but I double checked the the fuel couple times through the race and it said that I had like 70 something laps remaining so thankfully I didn't have to worry about that but as I could see Shio and the mirrors it was crazy because on the very beginning he was right up my tail, and then he started to kind of let off a little bit. I think he was starting to sandbag a little bit, or at least I felt that was the case, where he didn't want to get all the way up close to me. He talked about all he had to do is just give me a little bit of a tap, and that race would be over. And he was absolutely correct, because this car, you breathe on it. You do something just slightly out of the ordinary, and this car will snap and kill you. It was horrifying just driving this thing because there are so many moments where I just slightly get on the power a little bit I mean we're talking like 5 to 10 percent too much throttle input and it would just whip the car around in such a weird way because of it having that short wheelbase it was absolutely crazy to drive it was on a knife edge a hundred percent of the time and as you all know me I will lose focus. There will be moments that I get far enough into the race where I lose it and make a mistake or two. And I knew it was coming. It was not a matter of if, but a matter of when. And of just prolonging that as long as I can. So back to this, as I still see Shio in the mirror, I know I'm getting a little bit of a gap more against him, thankfully. But at this point, I don't want to just keep my NOS to the very end. I want to use it as much as I can to really make up as much of a gap as possible. So during any straight, any point where I'm just going straight, I am just using my NOS and just trying to kind of save it in a way, but also know when to use it. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the NOS meter and noticing when it's about halfway. That should be about lap 14. So that's kind of my goal is using, and at this point it's like lap nine. So I know that I can still be using it. I still got a ways to go. But this car too, the tune was just absolutely surreal where it would tap out at like 85 miles an hour. But the kicker about it is too, that it has a close, ratio for the transmission and for how it worked like first gear went up to like 20 miles an hour but then second was like only 
like five miles an hour third was five miles an hour fourth was five miles an hour so then you get up into fifth at like 40 miles an hour and then it goes up to 85 and then that's it so the entire race i'm driving in fifth gear and just listening to that engine note was just exhausting it's like oh god but i am driving it as hard as i can and i'm making a gap and I'm sitting there going, this can't be real. I don't know how the hell, out of a moment of notice, that I change cars, get into a great tune, and am able to drive this on a knife edge, and I'm able to make it work. Keep in mind, I still don't have traction control on. So I am just wrestling this thing, trying my best to keep it in line, and man, was it difficult. Lap 22 comes around and this is where things get a little bit interesting. I'm starting to deal with lapped traffic a little bit, trying my best because again, as Magnum was discussing, you breathe on this car, somebody taps you just in the right corner and everything can go wrong so fast. At this point, I want to say I've got like a 14 second gap to Shio and at that point it started to get closer so at this point i want to say it was down to like 10 seconds or so halfway through the race is about 14 seconds but then he started to pick up pace a little bit and i'm starting to get concerned it's six laps to the end and i'm sitting there going this is bad because i am starting to deal with lap traffic somebody's going to hit me i'm going to spin out shio's going to come up against me and we're going to have this moment right here I have this massive snap of oversteer and I almost go into the pit lane and keep in mind throughout this entire last couple of laps people are starting to see if they can play some mental games with me so Magnum's just saying hey man I wonder what happens if uh, Nana or myself are just to give you a little bump what if uh, you know what if your car starts to snag it you know I've given you some Mustang tunes in the past what if uh, this one goes the way of those or they start to bite you you know and i am trying my best to play it cool i'm just telling them to just go shove it just to leave me alone but not to do it in such a way that it provokes more irritation but just kind of say nope i'm doing good and i'm doing good yeah i've got a little bit of issues here and there but i'm good and i want to say that i booted up traction control to one just to make sure and that was probably the wisest choice that i've made because even though my tire wear has not been all that bad at this point the track is starting to get greasy especially at the top of the hill where we're noticing that there are some massive snaps of overseer that are happening and again four laps to the end and i am watching the gap to shield and i am silent but i am just absolutely losing it from the standpoint that I've seen that gap go from 14 seconds down to 10 down to 8 but then it stopped it didn't ever get lower than 8 I think it might have there was a point where after that that snap of oversteer that I got down to 5 but it never I was waiting for it to go down to 3 and go down to 2 and go down to 1 but it after 5 it went back up to 8 and then leveled out there and then went back up to 10 back to 8 and throughout all this I'm letting I'm making sure that I'm not focusing too much on that gap and I'm just focusing on my lap times as well I know the gap is going to be there but if I focus on it too much I'm going to lose focus and going to lose it on just a corner so I am now trying to see at what point do I use the nas versus keep it maybe there's he is sandbagging maybe shio is sandbagging to the last couple laps he made note that he's got enough nas left that he can really take it to me and i'm now starting to be i'm now starting to get into my own head about some of these games because i want to use all the nas that i can to make sure i keep that gap up but what if he does have that nas to catch up to me what if he does have that pace? I'm noticing that my lap times are kind of all over the place. I've been kind of sort of in the 104s, but then I get a snap of oversteer where I'm up into the 107, and then I'm 105 and the 104 again. 
and I'm noticing that even though Shio isn't the fastest man on the track, I'm noticing that other people have some significantly faster lap times. Ringmaster has put down a 103.198, an absolutely crazy lap. I know that Shio has been able to get into the 103s and the 104 is easy, but I'm trying to figure out to what extent he's been there. And thankfully, like I said, that gap just isn't really getting any smaller, but nor is it getting any bigger. So at that point, he must be running very similar lap times to me. And at this point, I am starting to let it set in that this could be my very first Sunday win. Going back... You guys missed this recording. I didn't actually have this recorded, but there was a race long ago. I think it was our second Sunday race. So it was before I started recording them on a weekly basis. There was a race where we were doing... It was like 700 PP like VGT cars or, or Group 3 cars or something on Spa Frankershop. And Shio had come to me with a tune and said, Hey, let's try this out, man. We were on racing hard tires. We had had it on fuel mode six. We didn't pit. We didn't do anything. And we just raced. We just raced to the end. The two of us were well ahead of everybody else. And it was on the very last lap, on the very last corner, that I lost it. Where I had just allowed a little bit of space a little bit too much space and Shio was on me the entire time and he was able to capitalize on it so I know at that point I started using the motto it is not over until it is over at this point I start to see some more lap traffic up ahead of me this entire race Drew has been on the intercoms being incredibly salty about his lack of NOS and he is incredibly salty about a lot of things but in a good way, like, he's not actually being, like, nefarious or anything about it. It's just a, kind of in a joking manner. And he's sitting there going, hey, man, if you get close to me, if we don't, if, if you lap me, if you get close to lapping me, I'm going to crash you out, man. I know it's all in jokes, but I'm starting to get into my own head. Like, maybe he really doesn't care, you know? So I'm trying to, again, keep my lap times up trying my best to keep this car on the road. I've still got a massive gap to Shio. But again, it's not over until it is over. I'm being very careful as I go up this hill for the last time. It is on the final lap. At this point, I was discussing if I should just scream at the top of my lungs, but I think that feeling had subsided that I was more exhausted. I was more just happy that it's almost over that I can finally claim my very first Sunday win against some incredibly competitive people, against some incredible drivers, and I start to look on the outside, go up on the inside, Drew is on the intercom saying, what the hell, man? And I celebrate. Ha! Ah, yes! Yeah! Ah! Uh. Woohoo! There we go. Three months is what it had taken. Three months almost to the day from when I joined Downshift Racing to my finally my first Sunday win. I joined today not thinking I was going to be competitive and in a moment's notice everything changes where I'm suddenly fighting for the win and do I have a nearly faultless race finally where I can showcase that I am a great driver from going from struggling to find friends to finding an incredible group of people who are competitive who are close racers who are here to have fun but in a very competitive manner who are smart intelligent people who know how to tune their cars great I managed to just snag a tune at the very last second and it changes everything so first and foremost, thank you, Magnum, for providing an incredible car, an incredible car that was able to get me to victory. And for somehow, some way, I was able to manage it for 20 
eight close laps. So thank you again, Magnum, for providing an excellent tune. Thank you to Shio for bringing me into this group with Magnum. The two of you together have cultivated such a community that I am forever indebted to you two where it's just this great community of awesome like-minded people that are here to fight fair but are here to have a good time at the end of the day three months changed my life where I'm finally a race winner amongst a very competitive group of people and I couldn't be happier again thank you all for the opportunity and thank you, the viewers, for watching through my experience, my journey with this group. Don't ever get the feeling that I, that this is over. We're just getting started. We have season three of the Sunday races starting up next week where we're on Daytona with any type of Ferrari, 850 PowerPoint limit. And of course, there's going to be a couple of weeks delay before we're starting up again with season two of Magnum Stars no traction control series where we are again going into European cars of the 70s and the 80s. I have already figured out my car. I figured out my tune. I am not going to let anybody change that for me. So I have picked a car. You guys will see it soon. But no matter what happens, I am not changing it. I love the car. I love how it drives. And you'll see it soon too. Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got so much more of this coming on up. And again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.